Welcome to Real Estate Radio Live, an informative and engaging hour discussing everything you need to know about the world of real estate. Your host, Tom K. Wilson, provides you with insight and guidance from his years of experience as a successful real estate entrepreneur on how to buy, sell, finance, and invest in real estate, and much, much more. Here's your host for Real Estate Radio Live, Tom K. Wilson. So nice to have you back with us. Thanks for tuning in to our Real Estate Radio Live program, your number one source for all of your real estate needs and education. We're broadcasting from the number one business radio station in the San Francisco Bay Area, KDOW AM 1220, the Wall Street Business Network. I'm Tom K. Wilson, your host for the 2 p.m. Wednesday edition of Real Estate Radio Live that comes to you Wednesday and Friday at 2 p.m. And daily Monday through Friday at 3 p.m. along with my co-host Joe Cachera, Mike D'Ambrosio, and Bobby Decker. If you can't make the live show, you can catch your podcast on reradiolive.com. And you can catch my programs on tomwilsonproperties.com or on iTunes or on YouTube. Uh, our guest today is Jack Shea, whom we'll introduce in a moment. And uh, wanted to remind you to go to tomwilsonproperties.com. Who, uh, where you can sign up for a weekly newsletter on, uh, that includes uh, current events and economics and how it applies to real estate, uh, market updates, uh, also uh, re- various white paper reports such as the science of selecting the best metros and products. Uh, Wilson Investment Properties uh, provides high-quality residential uh, rental homes and also commercial syndications where for about 50000 a share you can own a uh, high-quality commercial property that, that uh, typically only institutional investors can in- invest in. We always welcome your questions and requests for topics and guests, and we offer free consultation. So uh, with us today uh, is Jack Shea, who's going to be coming to Northern Cal next month, and we'll tell you about that in a bit. But uh, Jack Shea is an experienced investor, author, and educator who has been awarded the Certified Exchange Specialist designation by the uh, Federation of Exchange Accommodators. As members of the Federal and Exchange Accommodators, they subscribe to its strict code of ethics. The FEA conducts regional and national meetings covering the latest court decisions and IRS rulings on exchange issues. The FEA distributes analysis of IRS letter rulings, revenue procedures, and proposed new rulings to its members. He is available to uh, keep the clients informed on the most recent IRS decisions and a wide range of 1031 topics. Jack's a graduate of the University of Illinois, has uh, taught business in the MBA program at Florida Institute of Technology, moved to Florida in 1978, began investing in real estate, He's a licensed realtor and mortgage broker. He's done syndications, mobile home development. He's also bought and sold mortgages and notes on real personal property. He's concentrated on buying and selling options in real estate. He's been an investor in single family and mobile homes for a long time. And Jack operates a 1031 exchange uh, facility business with his uh, wife and with his son. Like most of us in this business, Jack, you um, stay pretty busy. And uh, welcome to the program. Nice to have you with us. Happy to be here, Tom. It's uh, it's been a good uh, trip for me, the real estate uh, after uh, business and other careers, and I've enjoyed it, and it's been uh, profitable. So, uh, tell us what your career path started off to be, and what uh, what got you over into real estate investing. Well, I was an engineer. Uh, I was a pilot in the Air Force for seven years. Flew uh, big. Uh, Globe Masters. Uh, and I got I went into the aviation business for ten years in uh, marketing, selling flight simulators, and uh, I decided that uh, I wanted to work for myself. So my parents uh, lived in Florida, and uh, I grew up in Chicago, and uh, where my father had uh, properties in a trust when I was a kid. I didn't know much about him, but it's been the law of the land since the 1890s in Illinois, so it's not any new device. So when I got to Florida and I found they had a statute and I met some other investors, in fact, Mike, uh, including Mike at that time, an investment club in Tampa, and started buying 
uh, properties in a trust and uh, partnered up with an attorney who wrote the law book. So I've never done any kind of deal not in a trust. And so it's uh, my standard uh, business or way of doing business, but then thousands of students coast to coast uh, around California have taken these classes and proved their safety and uh, uh, profitability by using the trust and it's uh, people can do it themselves so, so that's our that's what we try to do okay okay um, tell us uh, a little bit about your uh, 1031 exchange um, business accommodator business when uh, when did you get involved in that well in uh, 1986 as soon as they changed the tax law I looked around nobody was doing it and I had uh, I got uh, tutored by uh, attorneys at Chicago Title and Trust, and they said, well, you can do this. So I started to do it for friends, and uh, then the Board of Realtors uh, let the word out, and and then, then uh, I started doing it uh, more as a business than as a favor. And so we do thousands of them, and my son Daniel is certified. And it's a sideline, Tom, uh, to our business, and it's uh, – uh, people can have investment properties and, and and not pay the tax and reinvest their money in real estate of some type uh, in six months. So they're happy and we're happy. Don't you love it? I uh, when when folks um, are relatively new to it and they learn about all the advantages of real estate um, leverage, cash flow, appreciation, uh, ta- tax sheltering, and so forth. And then when they think they're almost over, and you tell them. Oh, by the way, if you ever want to sell it and buy something else, you pay no capital gains. And they look at me sometimes like, is that legal? Yeah. <laughs> so, they don't have that in the stock market. No, they sure don't. <laughs> they sure don't. Well, um, Jack uh, mentioned his friend uh, Michael, who uh, is also in the studio with us today, and uh, Michael Morangello, who is uh, the uh, uh, president of the – uh, Bay Area Wealth Builders uh, RIA, one of the longest uh, running top uh, RIAs in the San Francisco Bay Area. It's also a real estate um, investor and expert, flipper, uh, note specialist, and it's uh, great to have him back with us. Uh, Michael, uh, welcome back. Yeah, good to talk with you again, Tom, and uh, glad we have Jack on the line. I'm, I'm fascinated about uh, what he's going to discuss today with us about trust. Well, thanks for uh, thanks for raging to have uh, to have Jack with us, and I look forward to uh, seeing him when he when he comes up here. Um, what uh, what shall we uh, now? That we've got a little background. What shall we uh, uh, start with uh, with Jack and topics? Well, Jack, uh, I, I've known many many years, Tom, and of course, uh, you know he teaches uh, classes to investors uh, really around the country about lease purchase contracts, options, uh, using. Uh, uh, title holding trust. And I think that's what is of, of a lot of interest to people is the ability today to be able to do business privately and still profit. And uh, Jack, um, I know that you have mentioned a few moments ago a little bit about the trust. Um, let's talk about, um, you know, the fact that California doesn't have a land trust statute, but does certainly recognize uh, the ability of people to use trust to deal with their real property and personal property assets. And, um, uh, what, what my understanding is, is what there's only about a handful of states that actually recognize a land trust statute or form of holding title. Uh, yeah, my, like six states: uh, Hawaii and uh, North Dakota, Indiana, Virginia. But uh, the other states, we say, just drop the word "land," and as you were talking about earlier, it's a revocable trust. It's a, oh, and or and or a grantor trust. They're synonymous. So it. It doesn't need to be involved. That's allowed in all 50 states. And the book that we uh, provide for the students in the class, written by an attorney, has the laws of all 50 states. And people just have to look if they deal in Nevada or Utah that they, they comply with uh, typically the trustee, trustee's duties required and might be a word or two changed. Uh, but uh, I have in front of me the California laws which they say that they refer back to Illinois case law which has been litigated since the 1890s so there's pretty much everything something that it could happen it's happened and it's been litigated about trustees so California's cases back into the 60s 
about uh, approving uh, trust uh, use in California, but but they state that they require the trustee to have duties, active duties, and and not just the blank trust into. And if the trustee has the powers to lease, encumber, and sell, mm-hmm. then that's an active trust. That goes back to Henry the Eighth in in England, and that's where the history. Uh, came into the U.S. common law. So it's very firm in the law, and it predates corporations and LLCs and all that stuff. So California is on solid ground. Good. If if we... Uh, Jack, if we may, let's uh, let's let's back up a little bit for our listeners here, and and uh, before we dive into detail, let's just paint the picture. As uh, I think, I think um, uh, m- most uh, you know, relatively new investors uh, here trust or land trusts, and like, well, what's what's the big deal? What's this all about? What difference does it make? What, can you kind of paint the well, paint the foundation? It's, uh, analogous to a living trust or something like you said earlier, that they're not real familiar with them, but it's a simple title holding uh, a function that the trustee holds the title. That's all. He doesn't do business. He doesn't manage it. And that's done with a deed from, uh, say, you to, to put your um, investment properties in a trust or the one that you buy. It goes directly from Mike as the seller to Mary Jones. Uh, that's your trustee, Tom. And that's a simple uh, deed. And then the trust agreement says who's the beneficiaries and the successors, and nobody gets to see that. That's private. So what's the so what's the advantage? Other the is is privacy the the main value? Uh, most of uh, you know, there's dozens of benefits that flow from that that you get with the trust. Uh, uh, kind of like health insurance that avoids probate and it avoids judgments can't attach. And uh, if you and I and Mike partnered in a property and, and one of us got a million dollar judgment, it would attach to that investment. There are mutual investment properties in a trust that can't happen. And uh, it goes on and on. But the, most of the benefits stem from the fact that the owner, the real owner is off the public record and the tenants can't find out who it is and the bureaucrats and it doesn't avoid anything uh, illegal acts. It just cuts down, it's a firewall and a spam filter that cuts down the aggravation and uh, harassment and and all these other benefits are are built in which, you know, there's a couple dozen. Yeah. Okay. So now I think you've uh, reached our, uh, our our techie audience around here when you when you relate to firewalls and and spam. I mean, now now we have their attention. <laughs> so <laughs> they understand that jargon. Good. Well, we're going to come back here in a moment and talk with Jack Shea Moore, He's an investor, author, educator, expert in trust and uh, ten thirty one accommodations. We'll uh, stay with us. We'll be right back. For more information on today's program, visit reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. Welcome back to Real Estate Radio Live, streaming live on iHeart, TuneIn, and KDOW.biz. For more information on today's topic or guest, just visit reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. Again, your host for today's edition of Real Estate Radio Live, Tom K. Wilson. Nice to have you with us here today. We have on uh, online, we have Jack Shea, who's a longtime investor, author, educator, uh, expert in trust, and uh, 1031 accommodator as well. And we were talking about trust. And also in the studio, we have Michael Marangelo, who is the president of uh, Bay Area Wealth Builders, himself a very experienced uh, investor and uh, note specialist. Uh, Jack, uh, so we're introducing to people the uh, the concept of a of a trust and what their advantages are, and you indicated that uh, certainly privacy is one of the one of the uh, great ones that uh, acts a lot like a um, like a living trust. So uh, what what's the what's the difference? Why not just put it in a living trust? Well, the uh other benefits that's it's more like a will you you get the benefit of avoiding probate with uh this revocable trust is but i don't think that's a, a people's plan is their afterlife plan it's the 
operational plan that the trustee, that the beneficiaries uh, uh, runs the railroad. He nothing happens unless he directs the trustee to sell or to mortgage or to lease or to do whatever. So the uh, Wizard of Oz is behind the scene. The owner runs everything. He gets the proceeds and avails. And the trustee only acts on written direction, and the trustee is immune from liability if he behaves he just according to the trust agreement. He only acts when told to do so. And those uh, the contingency fee attorneys and, and, and tenants uh, would look up Michael and uh, and if he had 10 or 15 properties in his own name, they would say this. Uh, we see how we can collect on this frivolous fall down the steps uh, lawsuit that's probably never happened. But if they don't see anything, then they won't take the case. Uh, so that's the beginning of the firewalls that uh, are there. And uh, the the other, uh, you know, avoiding um, a, a forced share of, of that partnership. Uh, somebody wants to get out and force the sale of the property early can't happen. It's uh, the sales price is. Uh, is not disclosed. We put a property into trust and then buy the beneficial interest. There's no, um, nobody can tell when it was bought and how much it was paid for. It's not on the public record. So back to the, uh, the issue of, uh, a potential, um, suitor not, uh, being able to see who owns it. Is there any legal protection or is it just that they don't have visibility so they don't know who to sue? Um, uh, what, uh, it takes a court order to find out who the beneficiary is. And then in the class, we have uh, solutions for that. We have another surprise for waiting for them. So it, it doesn't cover up, uh, you know, meth labs or anything else uh, or uh, real liability if the house burns down and, and people die. But just the normal operation of real estate, uh, it makes it, it finds out that, People aren't that mad unless it's a major. Uh, so all these other uh, shields come. Uh, we, uh, uh, to me, Tom, it's it's like getting a new operating system. It's like going from DOS to Windows. It's a new way to manage. Uh, it, we acquire, we buy and sell in private as an agent for the trustee, but the management. Well, as far as tenants and evictions, and uh, we'll also use it for notes. Uh, we partner in private. You know, we three we could uh, trade shares in Burger King. We can just uh, sell be- each other beneficial interests. No courthouse, no notaries, no recording. Uh, it's those a, are all a big benefits. Yeah. A, a device that mm-hmm. uh, yeah. that I use where I. I loan money on the beneficial interest, and I hold the beneficial interest, like the car loan. No mm-hmm. foreclosure. So it so, doesn't uh, doesn't keep someone from uh, guaranteeing them that they can't hack into Sony, but it sure makes it uh, sure makes it a lot tougher for well, them. Uh, well, it does, Tom. Okay. And if there's you know a, a serious action, uh, there's you know temp, uh, often they'll. They'll settle for the insurance. Mm-hmm. But so it's no guarantees, but it, uh, we don't, that's, in that's, life, that's, but uh, what true. we're looking for is a greatly reduced risk. We have with us uh, today Jack Shea, who's a, a very experienced investor, author, educator, uh, expert on trust, who's going to be up here uh, in the Northern Cal for a workshop and presentation coming up. And we'll tell you about that pretty shortly. Stay with us on KDW uh, 1220 AM Real Estate Radio Live. We'll be right back with Jack Shea. For more information on today's program, visit reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. Welcome back to Real Estate Radio Live, streaming live on iHeart, TuneIn, and KDOW.biz. For more information on today's topic or guest, just visit reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. Again, your host for today's edition of Real Estate Radio Live, Tom K. Wilson. 
Thanks for being with us today. We have Jack Shea uh, with us, who's uh, going to be speaking and having a workshop here in uh, Northern Cal in October of 2015. If you're listening uh, before this time, Jack's a very experienced investor and expert on trust. And we also have with us Michael Morangiello, who's the uh, president of the Bay Area Wealth Builders, uh, RIA and himself a very experienced uh, investor and note specialist. Um, Michael, you wanted to uh, you wanted to have uh, help clarify yeah, something, I, I think, um, about uh, the value of trust. Well, I think the big, big value is the privacy aspect. Uh, that, and there's, then there's a lot of contingent uh, benefits, and I know we'll delve into some more of those. But uh, uh, earlier, Jack said that it's very easy for somebody to go and do some courthouse research and find out what people own. And uh, thank you, Jack, for putting a bullseye on my back, by the way. Um, But uh, it has been said that the 21st century terrorist is the contingency fee lawyer. And uh, that's very true. I mean, they they search and they won't take on cases. So if you can thwart litigation by not by being able to do business privately and not having other people know what you own or control, that's a huge benefit. And um, uh, you know, it's Jack will talk a little bit, I suspect, about, you know, Disney and when Disney was acquiring properties in Florida and how they went about doing that in a private manner. But uh, uh, also, uh, Jack, I was uh, just to give people a little bit of a taste of some of the other benefits of, of being able to use trust vehicles to hold title to property. Um, talk about how you can improve your financial statement also um, by using a trust to hold title versus well, maybe uh, holding Michael, an individual. The, um you know, if a judge says, do you own uh, uh, any part of this property? The answer is no. So you have um, you have uh, the ben- you have the the equity, the net equity. But uh, I have my attorney, my trustee, Mark Orta, as He signs notes and mortgages. I don't sign them, and and they're and he's not liable. So your balance sheet uh, shows Michael assets only. You have. Two hundred thousand dollar house with a hundred thousand dollar mortgage. You have a hundred thousand uh, equity and a hundred, and so you add up all the pluses you have, and you don't add up the minus. So who owns the uh, who's who's obligated to the loan to the mortgage? Um, the it's trust a unsecured debt. Yeah, and they, uh, they get the property. They don't get the trustee, and they don't get the beneficiary. So are are banks okay with the? Uh, 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 sometimes uh, they are, and, f- and for many years in Chicago, you couldn't uh, uh, borrow money unless it was in trust, and the and the bank held uh, the uh, beneficial interest as a collateral assignment. And mm-hmm. so, one thing that does for the lender is no foreclosure. So they'll take the property. They just don't want to spend a couple, year or two in court. I don't know how long a foreclosure is in California, but it's around two years in Florida. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's become protracted as a from a creditor standpoint, uh, and we can talk a little bit about that as well as selling on uh, beneficial interest. But I think we may be um, short on on this segment. And uh, uh, one other thing I think that's big is again, as you pointed out, is keeping liens and judgments from uh, others and you attaching to the real estate that you may own because it's in the trust name. Well, it's personal property, Michael. What what this does is convert real estate to personal property. So. You have a beneficial interest that's personal property. That's why you can trade it in Burger King without witnesses and notaries. I'll buy it from you. We can split it up nine different ways. Uh, you don't. Um, it's it's just like selling a, a bill of sale to a, a lawnmower. It's, it's no witnesses, no notaries, and it, it, it improves the facility of operating and speeds up your ability to make deals uh, in and out uh, and selling uh, for Jack, U.S. Excuse, investment Jack, property. Uh, excuse I buy me. We'll, the beneficial uh, interest. We'll, uh, we'll be back in just a moment. Okay. For more information on today's program, visit reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. Welcome back to Real Estate Radio Live, streaming live on iHeart. Tune in and kdow.biz. For more information on today's test, just visit reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. Again, your host for today's edition of Real Estate Radio Live, Tom K. Wilson. 
We have with us today Jack Shea, who is a experienced investor and expert on trusts, and also Michael Morangelo, who is the president of Bay Area Wealth Builders. Um, Jack and Michael, let's talk a little bit more about the advantages of, uh, of trusts, and uh, I'll have to throw out here, um, I know what some people are thinking, is there a disadvantage? So uh, what, what are, uh, are there any disadvantage in having a, uh, a trust hold your property? Uh, yes. Uh, Tom, and that's, that's, that's a good question, and that is your trustee, and you need to trust that trustee, and they could sell your property. So that's, uh, and we, you know, there's uh, sometimes a speed bump dealing with a, a bank or a insurance company, but they're surmountable, and uh, getting a good trustee is paramount, and we have some ways to uh, make sure your trustee doesn't leave town with your money. But uh, when I first moved to Florida, there was a story. The story was uh, Florida had uh, 63 put in a land trust statute. And shortly thereafter, somebody came to Florida in central Florida and bought 27,000 acres, all ended up to be contiguous in hundreds of different trusts. And Um, that's where Disney World sits. So uh, if uh, that had been known, the last orange grove would have cost umpteen million and so walt disney was savvy with that and that's uh it still sits there and other people do that they amass lands for oil wells or whatever or beachfront in privacy but another thing we're talking about in the last uh, several years that my attorney partner has developed uh, in a book is a personal property trust and we have an, and i put together a IRA checkbook trust. That's where you can get your IRA funds in the corner bank where you have checkbook control. So the three trusts we we discuss in in the same day because they they have an interaction that's very powerful and uh, and using those. So those um, uh, features personal property trust is. Uh, can be a manager of an LLC, but uh, many people deal in the note world. They buy notes or they buy car paper or mobile homes, any kind of personal property. So it looks the same as a land trust, but it's meant for uh, personal property and cars and boats and airplanes and uh, guns or whatever. So we have a lot of uses for that, avoiding liability. um, And the checkbook control trust Allows in, uh, a lot of investors are making 50 to 150 percent on their on their money by having the money to make a, uh, a deal this afternoon or this weekend, and and all those things are on my website on jackshayrealestate.com that blogs and articles and information about that. So we'll be talking about those in the weekend in uh, San Francisco. Okay. Yeah, one of the things about timing, as you mentioned, Jack, and that is these uh, is good deals. They don't last very long. They they tend to uh, be gobbled up very very quickly. And so a lot of people have money sitting with a I don't know a, a, a securities account or somewhere else, or perhaps they have an IRA with a custodian who's out of state or somewhere else. They just can't move quickly enough sometimes to take advantage of a great opportunity. So this IRA checkbook trust, which allows you to keep your funds local and uh, also gives you that advantage of being able to move very very fast as well. Yeah, another uh, advantage of that, Michael, is all the rents or note payments go back in your corner bank, and they can be recycled or, or reinvested. So the velocity of your money is a lot higher because you don't suffer those delays, and, and that's where uh, there's testimonials on my website of people uh, doubling their IRA, uh, dealing in notes. But you're, you're right, having the checkbook, in, in, in available in a few minutes is um, allows you to snare the deal that uh, otherwise might be gone by the time you get back. Yeah, absolutely. And um, you mentioned also uh, about problems with beneficiaries or multiple beneficiaries. Uh, uh, the fact that if if they were smart enough or savvy enough to have the title held in the trust, that that stuff that goes on externally doesn't affect that property per se, as it would if maybe they were in holding title some other way. Isn't yeah, it? Joint tenants or tenants in common, yeah, that can jam up the whole thing. Having uh, partnering inside the trust is, uh, the trust is, uh, judgments don't attach uh, to that. And it makes uh, co-investing 
uh, fast and, and facile, and you can buy each other out and, and that loan money. So those different ways to operate and run your real estate uh, system are, um, and the anonymity as far as tenants don't know, they don't have anybody to get mad at. It's like arguing with Visa or the phone company. You know, there's yeah. animosity or some yeah. late, uh, what do you call them, three-day notices or eviction notices. Uh, it's just somebody's doing their job and it's not personal. So I presume that this uh, privacy also helps keep uh, uh, liens and judgments uh, from the property. Yes, it does. You know, I'm sure a lot of people are wondering, you know, how they've heard that these things are expensive. You know, trusts have to be set up by attorneys and administered by attorneys and legal departments and bank trust departments. But we're not talking about that type of animal here. So, uh, Jack, share with us, uh, you know, the, 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 the cost that somebody might expect to, to operate or set up one of these things. Well, those the big estate planning trusts are, are very expensive. I've had books and courses on those. We we have the people in the class fill out a deed and a trust document. It's like filling out a lease or a, a contract. Name, couple names, address, date, and and the, and you hit print. So we don't, people don't leave the room unless they are able to do it themselves. I say if you can find a good attorney, uh, then find one. But there are very few. That, as as my partner says, there's not money in it for attorneys to to do this. So people, if I have, uh, you know. Blue collar people, I just say many friends of mine, they're not scholars. They, for years and years, they form their own trusts and they take the class for a refresher and they may call up with a question. But people can do it their own, the personal property trust and the checkbook. They have a template that's already filled out and then they put Joe Taxpayer, that's you, and Mary Trustee. And uh, it looks like any other lease. It's got an address and a couple people's names and an amount of money. Okay, Jack, we uh, and that's, we, we got to wrap that up in just a moment here. So uh, come back and we'll hear some wrap-up about trust with uh, Jack Shea and Michael Marangello. Uh, stay with us. We'll be right back. For more information on today's program, visit reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. Welcome back to Real Estate Radio Live, streaming live on iHeart, TuneIn, and KDOW.biz. For more information on today's topic or guest, just visit reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. Again, your host for today's edition of Real Estate Radio Live, Tom K. Wilson. Well, it's been great having uh, Jack Shea on with us today and Michael Marangello, who's uh, talking about advantages of trust, which I think a lot of folks think, uh, gosh, if you're in California, most of the other uh, 44 states that don't accept a land trust, that you uh, that it's not a topic of, uh, of relevance, but that's not the case. You can uh, do trust in any states, and uh, this expert uh, like Jack Shea can explain to you and how to do it. And we uh, we have some um, some more uh, education events coming up. Uh, Michael, tell us about that. Yeah, Jack actually is going to be here in the Bay Area on Saturday, um, October the seventeenth, down near the SFO Airport. Uh, and there is a class. It's the Master Trust class, and it really is all about building and protecting your investments and your assets. Uh, learning about these trust vehicles and how to utilize them, the uh, title holding trusts, the personal property trust or PPTs, uh, the IRA checkbook trust, which we touched on today. Uh, we'd love to have you come out and join us. It inc- the class includes a wonderful, well-written book with uh, laws in all 50 states and the forms that Jack talked touched on. So uh, if you want more information on that class, uh, just go to our website, bawb.info. That's b awb.info and uh, pre-register because there's a few free bonuses for people who get registered early and uh, that's Saturday, October 17th and if I may uh, we also have a um, wonderful expo uh, all about education and networking and real estate discussion um, coming up in Napa um, it's uh, we're calling it the appropriately the Crush It Real Estate Expo because it's harvest season in Napa right now, and that's going to be on Saturday, October third. And uh, we'd love to have you come out. It's a free event, so there's no cost if you pre-register. I think we're even providing free breakfast. So uh, come out for the education and the networking, and uh, stay for the wine. 
All right. And I have a number of speakers. Uh, I was invited to be there, but I uh, had a conflict, so I won't be. Do you know any uh, any of the uh, speaker that's going to be there? Well, we have a number. I'll be speaking. Uh, we'll have Good. a speaker on rogue rehabbing, uh, somebody that will be talking on commercial storage units and uh, a number of other topics, too, buying properties out of state and, uh, and ma- uh, negotiating and uh, different types of uh, of uh, vendors and whatnot. Be, uh, there's a wonderful ar- array of people there. Good. And uh, is Jack also going to be speaking at BAWB? Jack will be also coming out on the 15th of October uh, to our uh, monthly meeting. Again, get that information on our website, uh, BAWB.info. And uh, and then the class is Saturday, the 17th of October. Wonderful, wonderful. And uh, Jack, your website is what? Uh, All right. Uh, Michael's flyer. And the people come to the meeting, they'll leave the room, and uh, uh, being able to do your own trust. Wonderful. Thank you for being with us, Jack, and uh, thanks for being uh, with us, uh, your l- listeners, through our uh, program today with uh, Michael and Jack. And remember to go to TomWilsonProperties.com to sign up for uh, newsletters, see what uh, products we have to help you expand your uh, personal portfolio and real estate uh, commercial syndications and, and uh, uh, real estate uh, rental properties. And also, uh, in addition to the newsletter, there are a number of white papers. There's a lot of education material. And we always welcome your uh, questions and uh, requests. Uh, We've uh, got a lot more wonderful guests uh, coming up on future programs. And uh, go uh, you can catch all these podcasts on TomWilsonProperties.com. So uh, so, uh, come back and be with us next time on KDAW 1220 AM. Remember, the only thing that matters is what you do next. You've been listening to Real Estate Radio Live. For more information on today's program, visit reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. Tune in, log in, download our podcast. Discover more at reradiolive.com. reradiolive.com. Because